I truly believe that Bret Hart screwed Bret Hart. Let's go back to 1997. Vince McMahon's got a shiner and he goes and tells everyone that Bret screwed Bret. Everyone boos Vince McMahon to hell and out of that genuine fan hatred, the Mr. McMahon character kicked into high gear, becoming a huge heat magnet for years. Great, talk about making a damn good chicken salad out of chicken shit. Fast forward all the way to 2015 and the new day come in as happy clappy goobers. It's an awful gimmick, horribly promoted, and no one's feeling it. So the trio turned heel and doubled down on every stupid aspect of the gimmick they'd been given, eventually turning into a well-liked comedy trio with plenty of tag title success and, eventually, WWE title runs for two of the members. Sometimes, when fans genuinely hate a wrestler's act, playing into it can lead to big bucks. And speaking of bucks, here's a recent example of that idea totally failing. The Young Bucks. Not only have the Buckaroos never set the Bucks office on fire in AEW, they're now frequently proving to do the opposite, driving away audiences. But why? Plenty of people will point to their match style, but I don't think it's that simple. There are fans who love the high-flying, big-bumping action workers like the Young Bucks put on. It's all in the characters. These guys are cringe. They or heel, they can't act, they can't emote, their sense of humour is niche at best, their looks are awful, and frankly, they have no self-awareness. Look no further than the cover of their memoir. So, you throw in their real-life beef with CM Punk, a loudmouth from yesteryear with a very big, very vocal fanbase, and you have a recipe for trouble. At this rate, regardless of who the real villain was in that whole situation, Many people see the Bucks as snakes and troublemakers. Due to Punk's comments and rather unfortunate departure from AEW, and those people, they don't want to see the Bucks on the telly. You know who else they don't want to see? Jack Perry. Same deal. Jack Perry's whole character now revolves around the fact CM Punk shoved him a bit backstage last year. Once again, Punk fans don't like it, but more to the point, Beyond AEW and punk fans, no one but Drew McIntyre even cares that much anymore. And Jack Perry, I just said the Bucks are cringe. Little Jack Perry trying to pose like Raven and cut big boy heel promos is change the channel material. These three are a team now, with Kazuchika Okada, who's gone from the face of New Japan to just another guy in record time. We don't care about him here, he's irrelevant. The other three, though, are literally just team I hate CM Punk. And this would be fine if Punk was still there. You could maybe, just maybe, make chicken salad out of chicken shit if he was there, because then the whole real life beef can be turned into an angle. But as it stands, they're feuding with a ghost because Chicago Phil pissed off back to the big leagues and he's not gonna waste any more time on these guys beyond occasionally maybe burying them in interviews. So the whole angle becomes Bush League, and it makes AEW look Bush League in a year where ratings are burning. But are they the most frustrating part of AEW right now? Chris Jericho gives them a run for their money. Throughout the noughties, Y2J was a super dynamic performer in all areas. Throughout the 2010s, he did a lot of interesting and funny character work and remained relevant and in shape as he moved through middle age. In the 2020s though, it might just be time to hang up the boots and go tour with Fuzzy full time. The Learning Tree, much like the Bucks and Perry in 2024, is meant to be Jericho turning real life fan backlash into a heat magnet gimmick. Since dropping the AEW world title back in 2020, Jericho's pattern of leeching heat and relevance off of younger talents in never ending feuds has really dawned on everyone. And it's not good, and it hasn't been well received. The learning tree is childish, it's horribly acted, and for a man who once had a great mastery of wrestling comedy, it's an awful step into shark jumping territory. 
as a Greg Valentine looking clown overacts while telling people how to eat at catering and other equally stupid segments. Is it a parody of him giving advice or some goofy shit backstage? Do you care? Worst of all, he's introduced the Jericho Vortex into his endless array of one-liners. That Vortex, that Vortex is a fan complaint. That's what happens to the guys who feud with him. And it's also the kiss of death for those who team up with him. Big Bill has turned into a great worker under AEW's watch. But his potential to get over and jump up the card has been soundly chopped off at the knee now that he's just Jericho's latest idiot henchman. If people don't like it, a wink wink is not always a band-aid. It's like Deadpool and Wolverine. No spoilers, but anyone who's seen any trailer or read any review will know there's a horde of jokes about Marvel's multiverse obsession. And while that might be funny in that film's case, it doesn't save the MCU from the fact they've gone stale and their multiverse shite has stripped many of their stories of any urgency. Also, not to mention the just awful characters they largely revolve around these days, but that's irrelevant. Let's, let's get back to the topic. Right now, Jericho and the Elite are eating up too much TV time, all while torpedoing general fan interest. Throughout 2021 and the first half of 2022, AEW, despite its flaws, felt like a big deal product that was only going to get bigger with time. Now, though, Tony Khan's policy of being buddies with the boys is hurting him more than ever, as he allows rubbish ideas from unwanted talent to clog up dynamite with cringe content that has many jumping for the remote. To fix this, it's actually very simple. Tony Khan needs to take a page out of Vince McMahon's playbook, put his foot down, and just start saying no to the talent a little more often. Had he done this from the get-go and maintained a stricter backstage environment, it's hard to say how far the original punk fiasco would have even gone. And it's safe to say the promotion's current predicament wouldn't even be a thing.